Shane, what were you kind of expecting about this whole process, and how has it been? And I also wanted to ask you, how did the VO2 uh, <laughs> go this morning? Yeah, I think just expecting, you know, to talk to a lot of teams, talk to, um, you know, the, their staff and their management, just kind of get to know them, get to know, um, you know, what, what they're all about, what teams are all about, and um, have them get to know me as well, get to know me uh, more on the personal side rather than just watch me play on the ice. And um, VO2 was fun this morning. Uh, definitely a lot of Definitely pretty tough, uh, pretty tired after, but um, you know it's it's part of the process here. It's part of you know what we have to do. So um, it, it was all right. Yeah. What do you think you have to do to become an impact NHL player? Yeah, I think that um, I still got a lot of work to do. I think that um, you know, as someone who's who's always striving to be the best, there's always um, you know ways you can be better. There's always ways you can you know improve yourself as a player. So. Um, definitely want to get a little quicker. I think that's definitely something I want to want to work on, and I think um, just overall maybe be a little more consistent. I think um, you know at the next level in the NHL, um, you know it's the best of the best, you know the best players in the league. So uh, every little mistake you make, everything um, you know every bad play you make is going to get exposed. So um, I think you know I have to get a little more consistent with my game, but I'm also really happy where that's where it's at right now. Shane, uh, every every per player in your situation wants to go first. And you've come out, I believe, on TSN and said, I think I deserve to go first based on what I've done, based on how hard, how hard I worked. Um, what gives you that confidence? And when I re we relayed that comment to Yuri, he said, well, he's got his ideas and I've got my own. So how do, what, makes, what do you think separates you to be the first uh, in, this, in this class? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a competitive guy. You know, I always want to be first. I always want to be the best. I think uh, no matter what position you're in, no matter... Uh, where you're ranked, I think it's it's always your goal, always your um, you, know, you always want to be first. You want to be that first guy chosen, and that's that's always been my mindset. That's always been my attitude uh, throughout this entire year and throughout uh, my entire entire life as well. I always want to be the best. So um, you know, I think you know at the end of the day, it's it's out of my control now. But um, you know, I guess I have my own opinion as well on on the draft. But you know, you, you're competitive. You want to be that first guy picked, and that's definitely you know the way I feel as well. Shane, you've basically been in that presumed number one spot for a year. Do you think, you know, all the quote-unquote competition for it we've been talking about, hearing about, that being in that spot for so long, people are looking to pick at your game and try to find the flaws instead of see all the strengths? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, you know, any time you, know, you see someone at the top, there's always going to be, be people, you know, looking to, to drag you down. There's always going to be people looking to – uh, you know, nitpick your game, pick out those those little mistakes you make, rather than like you said, focusing more on the positives. So, um, I'll definitely agree with that. I think you know, people sometimes you know try to focus more on the negatives, and they want to almost see guys fail rather than uh, rooting for them to succeed. And just one quick question, also the interview with the Habs. You go through every interview with all these teams. You have points you want to make. How different in your mind was that interview for you, and maybe for them, knowing what might be to come? Yeah, I think it was definitely. You know, a little more added pressure on that. I think a little more added, um, you know, excitement as well. Excitement going into that into that meeting room with them, and excited, uh, you know, about the the dinner I had with them as well on Monday night. I think, um, you know, excited about you know the possibility of potentially potentially being there, potentially being in that situation. I think, um, you know, really, you know, really liked you know everything about them, everything about the organization. So um, definitely a lot, you know, a little more nerves, pressure maybe going to that, but I think you know more excitement than anything. With all this noise and buzz about you potentially going number one overall, but a lot of good buzz around you, do you think teams have a good idea of who you are, or is there anything you're trying to push or get across this week that is more true to you? I think so. Yeah, I think you know for the most part, I've, I'm I'm open with you know with who I am type player I am. I think um, you know teams got to know me well this week. Teams got to you know, understand me more kind of on the personal side rather than like I said, just kind of watch me on the ice and what I do as a player. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with, with how it went this week, happy with, you know, how the interviews went for sure. Shane, what are the, some of the things that you do to help out the younger players on your team to kind of help them along during a season? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was in their position once. I was, uh, you know, just, just a 15-year-old rookie coming into, the, coming into the OHL, um, you know, didn't really have an experience with junior, with junior hockey. So um, any way I can, you know, help, help lead them, help be a role model for them, uh, you know, whether it's with, with my work ethic, with my habits, um, you know, how I, you know, interact with the guys, how I, you know, interact with the coaches and all that. I think, um, you know, it's always important to be that role model for those younger guys. It's always important to, um, you know, help build them up, to help build up, build up their confidence because at the end of the day, you know, that's the future of, of Kingston. That's the future of, the, of, you know, the franchise. So um, you want to make sure, you know, every time, you know, you, you leave a franchise, it's a better place than, than when you got a game there. 
Hey Shane, uh, it just does seem that there's going to be maybe a little intrigue as to who goes number one. Uh, what is that situation like when, you know, none of us know, maybe you're not going to know until the actual night. And, and what do you know about the, the two guys that are also jockeying for that number one spot in Logan Cooley and uh, Yuri Slavkovsky? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, they're, they're two incredible players. I think they're two guys who have, you know, had really, really good years this year and, um, you know, have earned all the success they've had, all the, um, you know, the, the positive outcome and, you know, the, C, the, C, the years they've had this year. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, we'll wait and see who, who gets drafted first. I think, um, you know, after the interviews, after the season, you know, it's out, it's out of my hands now. It's in the hands of, you know, the staff in Montreal and, you know, as to what their decision is. But um, those guys have definitely, you know, earned, you know, every right and every, um, you know, every right to be in the position they are in as well. Have you spoken with any current NHL players who have helped guide you through, you know, the combine and the draft process? Yeah, not as much a current player, but a kind of a past player. Uh, Ryan Kessler, actually, um, someone I got in touch with through my agency. He's just a guy who's, you know, he's been at the top level. He's played, uh, you know, against the best players in the world, played in, you know, Olympics, played in Stanley Cup playoffs. And um, just a really good role model, really good guy um, to, to bounce ideas off and just kind of talk to. Um, learn from his experience, learn from what, what he's done in the NHL and what um, you know, he's accomplished in his career. Shane, what was the dinner like with Montreal? It was great. Uh, really enjoyed it. I think um, overall went really well. I mean, uh, I got a free steak out of it, so um, that's never a bad thing. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, it went really well. Really had you know, a lot of good conversations, really learned uh, a lot about them and a lot about uh, they learned a lot about me as, as well as a person. What do you think they learned about you? Uh, just kind of more of, you know, the type of person I am off the ice, you know, the, the type of attitude I have uh, off the ice and, you know, type of character I am and, and you know, what I want to bring, um, you know, to their franchise if, if they were to draft me. So, um, you know, just I think overall really, really happy with how it went. Shane, regardless of where you end up going, uh, how close do you feel uh, to being an NHL-ready player? I think I am NHL-ready. I think that, you know, this offseason I definitely have, you know, things I want to clean up on, things I, I can be better. I know, you know, it, taking that jump to the, to the NHL is, is a big step. There is a learning curve. There is going to be, you know, a lot of times where, where it's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of, you know, adversity that I face. But um, I feel like, you know, I, I can face that. I feel like, you know, I am ready. I feel like I can step in and, um, you know, I, I want to be a difference maker. I just don't want to be, you know, a guy that's kind of cruising along. I want to make sure that um, I make a difference in, in, in that league and for the team that I'm playing for. Hi, Shane. Uh, we heard that Montreal were challenging a lot of the players this week. Um, some of the flaws in your game is maybe in the level of engagement, the intensity in your game sometimes. Was that a question with Montreal, and what was your answer uh, to that? Yeah, it was definitely a question. I mean, I think um, you know, a lot of teams asked that. A lot of teams you know, kind of came up in, in the interviews that I faced, and um, you know, I just said, you know, some, you know, sometimes you know, maybe you don't have your compete at night, so I think sometimes um, maybe it looks like I'm not competing, maybe it looks like I'm not skating, but um, I think a lot, you know, w with the way I play and the way my game is, I'm not skating 100% of the time, 100% power, full out on the ice. I'm kind of, you know, I'm more methodical with the way I play. I'm thinking the game ahead. I'm trying to, you know, read where the puck's going rather than, you know, skating into areas, getting into bad ice. Um, so I guess, you know, sometimes it can be perceived that I am, you know, not competing hard, but I think that, you know, I'm, I'm reading the play, I'm understanding and trying to, you know, think ahead of the play a little bit more. Going, going back to dinner. How does like I mean you're on their dime. I mean you're getting you're getting a free meal here. How do you go about choosing what like do you go to the top of the menu and choose the most expensive <laughs> thing or or is it do you wonder pasta or I mean how do you go about just arriving on steak? I mean, <laughs> and because I mean this is part they're they may be judging you on what you pick as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny you you ask. I think um as we're about to order I kind of mentioned hey I was kind of looking at the steak but I'm like it's pretty expensive it's like 60 bucks or something they're like ah go ahead go go have it so um I made sure it was all right before the ass so yeah it's all good we often hear that players are asked unique or difficult questions to answer were there any that you faced in your interviews this week um, one that stands out for me, uh, I got asked uh, a little math question, what uh, 25 times 25 was, uh, right on the spot. So it uh, kind of stumped me, not the great, greatest with mental math. So it's definitely, uh, definitely the, the most interesting one for sure that I, that I was asked this week. How did you respond, just like that? Yeah, I, I said, you know, I tried to think it over in my head, try to, you know, 
I do the calculations in my head or um, or whatnot. But yeah, that's kind of how it went. Yeah. Probably more interviews than most players. So, how exhausting is that process going up and answering the same sorts of questions and questions that are really trying to see who you are outside of your on ice performance? For sure. Yeah, it can definitely get repetitive. I think, um, like you said, it's a lot, a lot of interviews, a lot of, you know, people asking you tough questions and, you know, it can get repetitive and get, you know, asking the same questions a lot of times in a row. And um, I think that, you know, as much as, you know, it can get, you know, repetitive and overwhelming, I think that, you know, it's just part, part of the process. I think it's just part of, you know, the position I am, I'm in and, you know, the path I've chosen and, um, you know, it just kind of comes along with, you know, the position I'm in right now. So um, as much as sometimes it get you know, overwhelming a little bit, I think that, you know, I still enjoy it. It's just part of the process and wouldn't really want it any other way. Shane, can you tell us your lottery story? Were you watching? Did you have a game that night and didn't see and had to find out what was the story when the lottery was held and Montreal won it? Yeah, I actually had a game that night. Um, I had just gotten off the ice for, for on-ice warm-up, and you know, my coach pulled me into his office and just kind of showed me you know, the results of the lottery and, and you know, who had the picks and what order. So um, I just wanted to know before my game, just kind of clear my head, just so I wasn't you know, really thinking about it during the game. And just what was the first thing that came to your mind when you heard it was Montreal? I think that you know, anytime you, know, you, you have a chance to go to a franchise like that and um, an organization and you know, one of the best fan base in the NHL, I think that um, you know, it was really exciting, really exciting opportunity. Um, obviously, you know, the, the lottery is one thing and the actually getting drafted is another. So don't know if that's where I'm going to go, but if it is, no, I'd be more than happy.